just wanted to take a couple minutes and talk to you guys about the installation of my HydroSmart 170 boiler and the HydroSmart 120 integrator panel. Although they've got reasonably nice hardware, the directions are just so awful that you end up spending hours talking to their customer service and have a lot of hassles because there's um, the directions are so poorly written. So I wanted to do this video to try and save you some headaches. So um, right now, if you look, we're in the process of starting to fill the system. And basically what we've got is a half horsepower transfer pump, a bucket with our liquids, which in our case, um, in Wisconsin where it's cold, we've got to mix some antifreeze in. And we basically drive it. In our case, we're actually driving in reverse flow. We're sending it in above the um, boiler pump, driving it around through the manifolds. By the way, these are collecting manifolds. We're running three quarter inch um, oxygen barrier packs. Uh, this is one of the things they don't mention is the fact that if you're running three quarter inch packs, you have to buy the collecting manifold separate. They're not available um, through the Menard store where we actually bought the rest of this hardware. We actually had to order them a special order. Again, we're running three quarter inch packs. Another item which would be nice for them to talk about since um, I don't do this every day is this three quarter inch pack is extremely stiff. Uh, they say that you can go six, six X or six times the diameter of the pipe for your bending radius. There's no way near you can get that. Maybe you can, but it's not workable. And what I ended up doing then was is we ran these pipes out at 45 degree angle and you got to be careful, you have to do a lot of measuring in order to get these to come out right. Again, I'm running uh, baseboard radiators, I'm not heating my floor. So we're coming out from the wall, we ran them out at 45 degrees, and then if you notice, we actually sweat on, these are 3 quarter inch 45 degree copper elbows, of course with PEX fittings, and encrypt them all on. This was the only way we could make this connection, even then it was very hard. Took a lot of figuring. We had to make some jigs so we made sure to cut our pipe at the exact length so it would fit up because there's very little play in here. So anyway, so yeah, we're driving it backwards. The reason we're driving it backwards is because this is another item they don't talk about. We've got actually a very short loop. One of our rooms we've got um, is very small, so they recommend putting in this bypass loop, loop uh, bypass fitting. Again, they don't talk about that, and that's so that. Um, the pump doesn't actually end up having, the, the loop pump doesn't actually end up having to work too hard to drive, trying to drive the liquids through a short loop. This is what I've been told by their customer support. So because we have this bypass valve, if we actually tried to fill the system the normal way, everything would flush through the bypass valve and none of it, not much of it would want to drive down through the loops. So. Uh, we're driving it backwards with the transfer pump and filling the system. Now a couple other points which they don't talk about is we have four, four zones. So on each of the zones they have what's called a telestat. It's just electronically operated uh, solenoid which works the valves for each of the loops on demand based upon what the thermostat is saying. The thermostat talks to this main controller box, then the main controller box when it determines that heat is required, it sends a signal to this telestat and it opens up the um, loop. When you're filling the system, you have to remove all your telestats so all these are open. Um, we made the mistake of, of course, installing a complete system and didn't realize that. I highly recommend you pressure test your system with air. Uh, you know, I made up a little, small little fitting like this with a hose bib and um, a Schrader valve on one end and a uh, pressure gauge on the other and you can screw that right onto one of the fill valves and pump up your system and check it. The reason I recommend that is actually I had a leak on this pressure combination pressure temperature gauge on my uh, um, HydroSmart panel and it was actually kind of hard to find because if you notice on these panels they use these special press and fit fittings, which by the way, if you ever want to get these apart, all you have to do is press this nylon ring in toward the center of the of fitting and then the pipe will pull right out. Didn't realize that at first. So we had a couple of those fittings here and here. Well, I knew my leak was somewhere in this area because I had 
um, valved everything off and capped off where I could, but I couldn't figure out where it was exactly because you can't bubble these fittings because in these fittings the o-ring is actually set way back. So if you try to bubble it, you don't know if bubbles are coming out of there or not. So I don't really like that feature plus the fact that this was leaking. So make sure you pressure test. Another nice <coughs> value to doing pressure tests is you can make sure that, for example, you're getting flow through your loops like you would like. Um, by the way, uh, another item they don't talk about in the instructions is when it comes to actually regulating the flow on each one of your loops, you can pull, you pull off these white caps, flip them over, and then you can actually rotate this gauge here and set your flow rate. You want to set your low flow rate between a half and three quarters of a gallon per minute. You want to set them so they're all equal. Um, so when there's a demand for, for all four of the loops, you want to set your flow rate and set it, uh, like I said, between a half and three quarters of a gallon per minute. There's actually a speed switch on this pump. And so what I guess I'm going to try and do is play around with the speed switch and these flow regulators in order to get that all equal. Again, not in the directions, um, but in talking to HydroSmart technical support, which is their only saving grace. If they didn't have that, I would have packed this stuff up and sent it back. Um, you can probably get a sense of my frustration uh, with the poorly written directions. Also, tried to talk to them and uh, suggested, you know, they send me an email and I would be more than happy to let them know didn't bother to ever write me back. So this is my only course to try and help you guys out that are doing these kinds of installations. Uh, another thing they don't talk about is I installed pressure temperature gauges on my in and outgoing loops. The reason, again, this is recommended by Clefi, or excuse me, HydroSmart technical support, but not in the directions, is you actually can look at the temperature differential, and looking at the temperature di differential, you can set this, um, you can also use that to determine your speed setting on your pump, you want a, you want a, you want a temperature differential of between, uh, let's see, somewhere between 30 and 40 degrees temperature drop from your hot side to your cold side. If it's more than, uh, for, for example, 50 degrees, then you need to slow your pump speed down. If it's less than you know, 30 degrees, if it starts to get only 20 degree temperature drop, then you can slow your pump speed down. So you have to play around with these things in order to get the correct temperature drop across your loops and the proper flow rate. Um, see if I can remember a couple other issues that I had. Yeah, if you look at, we're feeling here, um, this blow off valve is set at 30 PSI. Well, um, if you forget to take off your actuators, and you start to run your pump, you're easy, easily going to exceed the 30 psi pressure here. In fact, that's what I did. Had antifreeze spray all over my shop, spent four hours cleaning it up. Yeah, thanks for the good directions. Um, so what I did is I installed a shutoff, shutoff here and ran a separate hose down here just in case I ran into that problem again. Highly recommend you do that straight off the bat and save yourself the hassle. Uh, what else? Oh yeah. Failed to mention it, but when you're in my situation, when you're where you're driving the liquids backwards in order to fill your loops, they actually have a check valve. It's a plastic check valve, which I pulled out from this loop pump. And so what you have to do is you shut off the valves on both sides. You can drop the pump out. Check valve pops out with a screwdriver and reinstall it. But it took me about a half hour, 45 minutes of trying to figure out why in the world I couldn't drive the fluid through backwards and uh, finally called Kalefi again, or excuse me, um, HireSmart again, and they told me, oh yeah, by the way, there was a check valve in there, you need to pull the check valve off, thanks a lot. And uh, one other thing that I did, which you won't be able to see from the vantage point that the camera's at now, but this um, pressure tank, which of course is because when the fluids heat up, they expand, and you need to be able to soak up that extra volume somehow. This pressure tank only is supported by this half-inch copper, and if you bump that, or it's in your shop or whatever, you actually bump it, bump into it. I could easily see, you know, cracking one of these fittings and getting a leak and having a big hassle. So what I did is I took quarter-inch by half-inch aluminum bar stock that I had laying around. I bent myself an angle, 
and actually drill the hole in it, and there's a Schrader valve on the bottom, like in every expansion tank, and use that Schrader valve as another mounting point so that this pressure, pressure tank doesn't wobble around. So that's pretty much it. By the way, uh, on my boiler, I went with the uh, extra kit that allows you to draw in your fresh air from outside rather than within the building. The plate that they send you actually goes in the bottom. I'm just mentioning this because the directions are not perfectly clear. The plate goes on the bottom to actually seal off the entire unit. You install this fitting on the top. It's a stainless steel fitting for three inch PVC pipe. I'm actually going to run that straight up and out. You can see at the top of the ceiling there, maybe, <laughs> um, that uh, that's where my 3-inch PVC comes in. This is double-walled stainless steel pipe, by the way, going out through a thimble in the, in the wall. So I think that's pretty much it in terms of the issues. I have no problem with the hardware. Um, price, price was good, but the directions are just so awful. You almost wish you hadn't bought the system um, unless you run into this video, or hopefully maybe HydroSmart will notice this video and, and wake up and, and fix their directions. Good luck on your project. Yeah, I wanted to put a couple extra pointers on there since I got a little more time. One is, is uh, these two gauges which come on the integrator panel. You want to look at your pressure on these two gauges and get about a 7 PSI pressure drop between your supply side and your return side. If it's less than that, increase your pump speed on your, your, on your boiler pump. If it's more than that, decrease your pump speed. Again, not in the directions, but that's what uh, HydroSmart support said. Another thing is, is when you're doing your loops with these Kalefi manifolds, when they sent me, and you, I don't know if they will have changed it by the time that you see this video, but in the directions, they actually have the manifold with the flow meters on the top in the picture, and the one with the um, telestats or electronic actuators on the bottom. If that's the way you install it, which I don't know if you're like me, but you know, I peruse the directions and then I basically look at the picture. The picture was identical for my system, same integrator panel, same manifolds, everything. I installed it like the picture was, but it's not the way that you want it because if you install it that way with the flow meters on the top, you're actually, your one inch copper pipe is going to have to cross over each other. It's going to look funky. I don't know about you, but I don't like, like that kind of installation. So after I installed my manifolds and I started to look at installing my copper, I realized, geez, this is all backwards. Thanks again. So I had to pull these manifolds off, which, as I mentioned, was not fun. I had to strip all the hardware off the ends of the manifolds, reinstall that, reinstall it back into the hardware. Anyway, uh, make sure to look at how you're going to run your piping and the way that your manifolds are set up so that you don't run into the same issue. Um, and the last point is with this filter here, this plastic filter, you have to get your copper just right. There's not a lot, well in my case I wanted my integrator panel next to my, close to my boiler so that I wasn't tape, taking up a lot of room on my shop wall, but this copper is hard to sweat. It took me three or four times I had to re-sweat it because of course when you re-sweat it the fitting moves a little bit and by the time you turned it in there the ends just don't line up quite right. So a little bit of a challenge and it would be nice if HydroSmart thought of a different piece of hardware to go in here which was a little more for, forgiving because it was um, somewhat problematic to get this filter in there but uh, eventually I got it to the point where it just slipped in in the rubber o-rings um, once I tightened up these plastic unions it sealed up nice and tight so yeah it'd be nice if HydroSmart changed that around again. Again good luck on your project.